What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to double tie a rod. Now you won't necessarily need a skate park. The things you will need will be a bike, a helmet, and an open parking lot. Parking lot preferably that has lines like you see back here or parking blocks. Well I say lines first because I'll be teaching you how to balance without having to do the bunny hop first. The lines are what we're gonna start with first and then we're gonna graduate to the parking blocks. If you don't have parking blocks near you, but you have two by four or two by six, lay it on the ground and that would be your target to be able to use today to learn how to double tire after we get it on the flat ground first. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. I love doing how-to videos just like this and if you guys aren't familiar with my riding, I actually love to do double tire rides just like this. Here's some clips. So if you don't have a parking lot strip just like this, a 2x4 or 2x6 will suffice because you'll be able to ride up and on it. Or if you have duct tape, duct tape will definitely work. So one of my favorite ways to learn how to keep your balance, a lot of people are like, well, how do you stay straight? So before I started doing double tires like this on rails and ledges and just manuals and stuff like that, I ended up doing stuff like this. This is pretty old school. A kid around me when I was growing up showed me how to do this. Put one foot on the pedal, one foot on the wheel, and learn your bike, learn your balance from side to side, and then you'll be able to do it no handed or even two feet on there at once. So you'll be able to have a lot of fun with this trick. This will actually teach you a lot of the basics you would need to know with something like this, believe it or not. Even though you're going from like side to side, it's teaching you how to understand the balance with your bike. After you get that, and if you come from a racing background, this actually might help. So racers know all about pressuring their front wheel up on the gate before they get started. So they have to be able to keep their balance side to side. So in order for them to get started with doing something like that, they usually start on flat ground like this. And it helps to have a brake. You don't have to have a brake, but I'm gonna use my brake right now. And then you just turn your wheel side to side like that, and that's gonna help you with that same balance I just showed you in the beginning. And then see how my knees are bowing side to side and it's helping me keep my balance? That'll help. I'll try without brakes right now just to show you that it is possible, but you will be coasting forward and backward or side to side because the brake is gonna help you keep stationary in one spot. So we'll say, we'll try to stay in one spot as best we can. I'm doing that by keeping my chest centered over my stem and that's gonna help with that whole process. The chest centered over the stem is actually gonna help with this double tire as well. And one more technique that you wanna remember through the whole process. After you get this and master these two techniques, the most important technique to the double tire ride is pinching your knees. Now a lot of people wanna come from the side and jump onto their double tire ride. I don't encourage that because it's harder to manage both wheels going from the side versus going forward. Because going forward, wherever you look at where your front wheel is going, your back wheel is gonna follow if you keep your knees pinched. We'll touch on that in a moment once we get to the parking blocks. But first, let's try to do a couple double tire rides and see how far we can go on the strip. So when you're doing a double tire ride like that, you don't have to go necessarily as far, but I wanted to show you there with my balance going side to side and my chest being over my stem. So the first and foremost, you wanna go with controlled speed, a speed that you're comfortable with, not going too fast to where you just basically lose your balance real quick. You wanna be able to feel the balance from side to side, from back and forth with your chest going over your stem. All this is gonna make sense when you go to do it on a parking block or a rail or a ledge or whatever it might be after this video but you wanna master it on something like that. I actually encourage you to do as many as you possibly can. Everywhere you look, look for different double tire rides to do after watching this video. Now this is something that might not come first try, and if it doesn't come first try, don't get discouraged, keep trying. This is something that I'd love to do. I just love hanging out in parking lots and seeing all the different double tire variations I can possibly do, and I encourage you to do the same because it'll make you a really well-rounded rider, whether it be street, park, dirt, or vert. If people actually still wanna ride vert these days, it's absolutely insane, but all these balance techniques will really help you in all avenues of BMX or mountain biking, 
or road biking or no matter what bike you ride. I'm pretty sure you could do this on any bike. So as we graduate further, we're gonna do the parking block now. Now, if you have a two by six or a two by four, that'll definitely suffice. If you have a couple center blocks to be able to set up your own bunny hop scenario onto the two by six or two by four, that'll definitely work out. So if you've made it to this portion of the video, I encourage you, you have to know how to ride off of a curb, letting both wheels land at the exact same time. That is gonna be crucial with this because if you just ride off and let your front wheel drop, as you get higher and higher on obstacles, you are gonna get worked because your front wheel eventually is gonna bottom out and loop out in front of you and you're gonna fall. So you wanna at least make sure that you can double tire off of something, whether it be any type of sidewalk, and pull up and land both tires at the exact same time. So yeah, let's get started on the parking block. If you've already mastered the double tire ride on a line, just like this one right here, doing a bunny hop, then you are ready to do it on a parking block or a two by six or a two by four. I'm gonna show you the technique and the speed I use. I'm gonna break it down for you as best as I can. All right, I got kind of bored of that last one with a cross-legged double tire ride, but I felt like it was necessary. Why not, right? So we're gonna go over the technique that I use to be able to do that double tire ride. As you can see right here, I went with a controlled speed. You wanna go head on in a controlled speed, eyeball your front wheel because your back wheel is gonna follow your front wheel if you do that pinching technique that I told you earlier, where you're pinching your knees and that keeps your back wheel lined up with your front wheel. Now, as soon as you get your wheels on there, immediately shift your body weight to where your chest is over the stem and you're standing upright over the stem, keeping your balance, because that's gonna help you keep your momentum forward while also keeping your balance centered. Centered is absolutely crucial because if you start leaning back or leaning too far to one side, a wheel is gonna slide off. You're not gonna get hurt. Your back wheel will fall off of the ledge and you will do like a tire feeble, kind of dragging your back wheel. You just put a foot down and keep trying and trying again. But like I was saying earlier, you don't wanna graduate to this point unless you're comfortable pulling up and letting both wheels land at the exact same time. As you can see here on the curb, I'm letting my bike ride off, pulling up a little bit to let both wheels land at the exact same time. As you get higher and higher in different obstacles, if you don't let that happen, your front wheel will drop. Your front wheel will end up dropping off too soon and end up getting stuck in a backwards roll. And a lot of times you won't be able to get your hands off quick enough to be able to put them out, to be able to protect yourself, and you'll go straight to your head. And your brain is something you don't wanna mess with. That's why I say it's so absolutely crucial to wear a helmet, especially if you're graduating on to riding these type of obstacles and riding like this on an everyday basis, why not wear a helmet? Why not? You just want to protect yourself. Your brain is something you can't reset, like your arm, your leg, your wrist, whatever it might be. If you guys have any comments or questions, please put them below. I'll definitely answer back to them as quickly as I possibly can. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comments below as well. I have a Will It Ride video coming out in the days ahead. There's a curing process to what I'm using in that video, which has a little bit of a subtle hint. If you guys watched my last live stream, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you guys found this video useful, please share it with a friend. Help them out with double tire rides. If you guys like this video, drop a like. If you love it, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one.